This is the third section of chapter eight, modeling in mechanics. And this section is on quantities and units. So the first thing is that in mechanics, we use what we call SI units. And this is an international system of units to ensure that whatever country you're in, uh, when we use certain units, we're all using the same type of units. Now, this does not include imperial units, which some countries use. This is only metric units. So for mass, we always want to be using kilograms or convert to kilograms. For length or displacement, we use meters, so we convert to meters. And for time, we always work in seconds. So if we have any other unit, like hours or so on, or minutes, we will convert them to seconds. So from these like base units here, we can get our compound units. So speed of velocity, meters per second, which we can write m over s or m s to the minus one. Acceleration, so it's meters per second squared. You might also say meters per second per second, which is m over s squared or m s to the minus two. And a weight or force, we measure that in newtons. We use the letter n, and you can see it's kilograms per an acceleration here. So you've got a mass times an acceleration. So let's say we've got like an object here on a what we'll call a rough surface, could be smooth. Then we have the weight of the object here represented by W. So this object pushes down into this surface weight. Now the surface pushes back uh, with another force which we call the normal reaction. Now if it didn't push back with this force, this object would would basically fall down or sink into this surface here. And F here might be our pulling force. And if we're pulling something on a rough surface, I'll just put down that this is rough, then there will be a frictional force, but it will be going the other direction. So I've put resistance here. So there's this frictional resistive force that will go in the opposite way to the motion of the object. So if an object's moving to the uh, right, the frictional force will be to the left. It tries to stop something from moving. So it will oppose the direction of movement. Now, if you've got, let's say, a string pulling an object, then that creates a force called tension. So tension will be a pulling force, normally by a string or rope. And if you've got something pushing into an object, so that may be like a, a rod, a, a beam, something like that, it's pushing into an object and causing it to move, then that's called thrust. So tension pulls, thrust pushes. Then lastly, if I've got some sort of object, like a little boat here, let's call this the Heinz boat on some water, and it's assumed that it's sort of floating on the water. Well, you've got the weight of the boat uh, going down into the water. But the reason it doesn't sink is because the water is trying to push it back up. And that force is called buoyancy. Example three, write the following units in SI units. So we'll start with part A. Um, distance or displacement needs to be in meters. So four kilometers times that by a thousand. So we'll get 4,000 meters. Part B, we've got 0.32 grams. That needs to be in kilograms for an SI unit. So that needs to be divided by 1,000. And that gives us 3.2 times 10 to the power of minus 4 kilograms. Then lastly, we've got here kilometers per hour that needs to be changed to meters per second. So we've got 5.1 times 10 to the power of uh, negative six, or six sorry, kilometers per hour. So we're going to do this bit by bit. So the first thing is we're going to change it to meters per hour. So we need to times this by a thousand to work out how many meters we would cover in an hour. So that gives us 5.1 times 10 to the power of nine meters per hour. Now what we're gonna do is to work out how many meters this is in a minute. 
So we need to divide it by 60. We're going to do a 60th of the distance in um, one minute. That gives us 8.5 times 10 to the power of 7 meters per minute. And now I'm going to convert it to meters per second. So that means dividing it by 60 again. Now I could, from this point here, you could divide by 3,600 and that will convert hours to seconds dividing by 3,600. Okay, so that gives us 1.41 and it looks like 6 recurring times 10 to the power 6 and that will be meters per second. So I might want to round that to three significant figures. So now I get 1.42 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. Example four, the force diagram shows an aircraft in flight. Write down the names of the four forces shown on the diagram. Right, so A, I suppose this is the force that is causing the aircraft to move upwards. So we would call this an upward thrust. So this is what's pushing the aircraft upwards. So nothing's pulling it. Remember, for us, pushes. So you've got the force of the engines and these flaps and ailerons and so on pushing the aircraft up. So it's an upward thrust. B is going to be the force that's like pushing the aircraft forward. So B would be a forward thrust. There's no tension, nothing's pulling it. It's being pushed forward by its own engines, by its own propulsion. C, well, that will be the weight of the plane. And then D, this force trying to stop it from moving is going to be air resistance. So you should now be able to do exercise 8C on page 124 of the textbook.